Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the beautiful outdoors. And today we are going to attempt to crank up some walleyes. I got about five hours. I got out mid afternoon here. And the only goal right now is just to crank, pull cranks. I honestly made a video just like this about a week ago. I got home and I deleted all the footage myself. No mistakes, memory cards, GoPros, nothing. I deleted the wrong folder. So I'm making the same video over again. It was a great video too. A couple nice 23 inches, nothing bigger than that though. Thankfully, I didn't get like a 30 incher and I deleted that. So anyways, pull some cranks, make some videos, make some videos. Let's pull, let's pull some cranks and make a video. Let's focus on one video, Clayton, just one. Let's do it. Let's start with one of my newest favorite cranks, the Purple Tiger 800 series reef runner. I'm going to start with the big motor. I've got a little bit of wind into me, but if it's not getting me down to like 2.1, two miles an hour, I'll probably pop down the Garmin, which I've been cranking with now. Back in the day, I've only ever used the big motor for cranking. Now with this new Garmin, I have been able to pull cranks because it lasts all day. The power is insane. I've been loving it. Anyways, we'll talk more about that as we go, but let's get this bait out and get cranking. We'll probably start around that um 18 to 25 feet ish i think with about 140 feet of line and uh we'll continue from there we're going to obviously keep adjusting and i'll tell you what i'm doing as the video goes this one will be more of an in in detail video compared to the last cranky video that i made with carter where it was like just fish catches i try to mix it up once in a while for videos all the time so anyways let's get some line out and get a cranking Probably go put it in the rod holder too, I think. We'll see, I might hold it too. I might even just hold it to start with. There we go. First one, I'm gonna take it in and out of gear. I wanna keep a little bit of forward momentum going, but not, not too much. It doesn't feel very big, but. First fish took a total of about four or five minutes, maybe, I think. First pass on the first spot. I'd like to see a little bit more wind. I might go search for a little bit more wind. This one doesn't feel tiny, but it doesn't feel big. I don't want to lose my forward momentum. I want to keep a little bit going just in case. That's why it's nice to have the trolling motor down because you can keep that forward momentum going and I can just bump the speed back just a little, little bit. So, Or a second person, right? A second person's always good too. Water is green right here. Mutant green, okay. We're on the board, not a bad fish. Not a bad one, actually. Well, first one comes in at a, a whopping at 19 inches. Well, we're on the board anyways. Like I said, I'd like to maybe go somewhere where there's a little bit more wind here or troll for a bit further. Along this dead calm stretch and we'll go find some wind. Wind is sometimes really good for cranking. Like not, I mean like extreme wind, but just a nice little chop. A walleye chop. One of the nicest things about holding the rod is if you're going in and out of the depths, you can you can adjust it quickly. Not that you can't stand up and adjust it in the rod holder too, but I'm trying to basically bump the bottom periodically, but not like not the whole time. There, there's times where maybe I want to bang it into the sand for a huge flat or something like that. But a lot of times there's still weeds this time of year. And if you're in the bottom too much, you'll end up getting a lot of gunk and weeds on, on your crank. So I'm trying to like bump into the bottom once in a while, but I'm not trying to like consistently drag bottom the whole time. Well, first stretch, very medium. Going to reel up and go troll a new stretch. Oh, geez. I was cranking up and I just got hammered as I was reeling in. Of course it was staying down low. I don't think it's that bad of a fish either. Wow. It's just hammering it in. Got him sideways. Ah, comes out of the out of the jungle juice there. Not bad either. I can't say I was going much quicker than what I've been trolling, but maybe I do need to speed it up a bit. Wow. Well, the second one just hits 20 inches and even though I said that I was going to leave and I caught a fish I'm still gonna leave I'm not gonna let that make me keep staying here. I could always come back here I'm not on a really big body of water 
I can kind of jump around as, as needed. So let's move to a different spot. Sure looks like it's gonna be a nice night. Love it. Well, there might not be much more wind here, maybe a little bit. It's definitely not as green as it was on the other side of the lake though. So we'll drop out back to about 100 and 120, 140 feet. We'll see, we'll adjust it as we go. That last fish I really gained no information from because it was as I was reeling in. So I don't know how fast it was moving, nothing. All I know is it was banging into the bottom a little bit. So I was still down on the bottom when it connected. But I can't remember what I was for in depth when I started to reel up. I'm pretty sure I was still in that 20 to 23 feet type of thing. So didn't really gain much information from that fish. And a lot of times when you're cranking, it's all about putting the puzzle together, right? The pieces of the puzzle slowly to try to figure it out. So anyways, I'm going to continue with holding my rod for now. Just because why not? And uh, maybe later I'll throw it in the rod holder. But for now, this will be the plan. It does look like the wind might not slow me down enough though. I'm gonna have to probably drop down the trolling motor, I'm thinking. Can't get quite slow enough, so I'm gonna put the rod in the rod holder for a second. Get the Garmin cracking down, and we're gonna troll with that as well a little bit. It's definitely slow on this stretch, but I'm not gonna quit yet. I've lost my wind completely. Just toss my rod in the rod holder for a little bit, and we'll, uh, we'll just keep, keep on going down this stretch and see what we can make happen yet. Definitely not a, a big start to the day though. Ooh, that's the fish. That's the fish, that's the fish. Back down a bit here. So I like with the Garmin trolling motor, back down my speed a little bit, just to keep some forward momentum. And yeah, doesn't feel very big, but it is another fish. Hasn't been hot and heavy. I might even switch crank colors, I'm thinking, just to try something a little bit different. Turn myself to the left a little bit here too. This is a small one. I believe this one's smaller than the other ones for sure. Water ski them in, baby. Oh, maybe they're on the same size. Yeah, probably. You usually don't catch a lot of smaller ones with this size of crank. Of course you catch some, but Usually you're picking out the more bigger, aggressive ones. Oh, easy buddy. He tried to freak out on me. We'll get a quick measure here. Just approximate. Show them off, get them back. It's about 21 and a quarter. So the biggest of the day, but only 21 and a quarter. Get them back and hopefully get some more. Okay, we're gonna switch to a gold color one here with a, a red nose. I forget the name of it, but I'll flash it here. It's like, I think it's like gold clown or something like that, or yeah, gold clown nose. I can't remember, but it's a gutter. That's the one I started with there. The 800 series purple tiger reef runner. It's another reef runner that's on there. I used to troll a lot of the reef runners back in the day, but I got so tired of like always having to tune them right out of the package, it would never run right. Now they're hand tuned right out of the package or they're like basically before they're put in the package they're hand tuned. So you'll see the reef runner's got some fancy new packaging and yeah, hand tuned. Always been a huge reef runner fan. I've always liked reef runners. And then last year I was using the deep diving bandits. They were really good. Tail dancers. It's, it's good to kind of mix things up. I, I'm not like this huge cranking nut where all I do is pull cranks and I don't know like, the whole science if there's like a specific crank that's going to work on a specific day or anything like that but all i know for sure is that the ones i've been using the last couple of years the bandits work and these reef runners seem to work as well i don't know what's going on here this one seems yeah he's there he's just small back it off a little bit he sure hit it hard yeah back her off and reel it in just a little guy i catch three with the purple tiger that are over 19, I put on the gold one and I catch a small one right away. I don't know if that means anything, but we'll definitely have to pay attention. I'll get another small one. I might be going back. 
trolling motor bumped up again like i said all i do is literally have this trolling motor locked in at two sometimes 2.1 mile an hour and as soon as i get a fish bang 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 bump it down to like 0.9 mile an hour just so it keeps some forward momentum going as i'm trolling and then i'm also locking down my heading sensor and i'm just making small little adjustments just to kind of ride the contour all the way down i'm using angler's edge mapping from well they're that's not actually a Lowrance company but it works on the Lowrance Angler's Edge mapping works on Lowrance and you can also get it on Avenza maps or Avenza apps it's called too you can download the apps or the app and possibly get a map for your lake obviously check the uh, Avenza website not the Avenza website the Angler's Edge website first just to make sure that the lake that you want is on there before you download anything well the app's free you can download that no matter what and then search for the lake on there so come on Clayton make sense out of this whole thing and this is the new Garmin Kraken force trolling motor this is the 63 inch version right now I have it set up to 24 volt although you can make it 36 or 20 volt which is 24 which is so nice right it's not like you buy a specific troll motor and that's all it does you can hook it up to 36 volt and say you have a battery go down it'll actually change itself over to 24 volt at 24 volt it's 80 pound thrust and then at 36 it's a hundred pound thrust been very happy with this trolling motor it's it's kind of funny so yes the trolling motor was given to me by Garmin but it was almost like a test from them they're like hey do you want you know we want to try this trolling motor maybe make some videos on it and i'm like sure i can try it but i just want to let you know it's like i'm not going to like just just because you gave it to me I'm not like oh this trolling motor is awesome i'm like so you run a risk of like sending it to me in that sense if i don't like it i'm probably going to say that and they're like they're pretty confident and they're like no we have a good feeling once you put it on your boat that your other trolling motor is going to come off and never be put back on and they weren't kidding so this thing is going to be on the market soon i believe the the garmin crack and it's available in 63 75 and 90. of course 90 for all our freshwater boats is going to be too big it's more of a saltwater uh, big bay boat type of thing but i know jay's running a 75 inch on his boat his boat sits a little bit higher in the nose and yeah but i'm getting away with the 63 just perfect my old trolling motor i believe was a 60 as well or maybe a 65 i can't remember but this one is is perfect I've been super happy with it so responsive so fast i've never cranked with the trolling motor before and i'm liking this a lot i can just sit here with the remote in my hand make little adjustments like i said all i'm doing is just kind of adjusting my heading sensor a little bit to follow my map all the way down as you can see right here i'll just go with the head camera there i'm just following the contours all the way down right now i'm in 18 feet so i do want to get myself out just a little bit more i think all 18 feet could be could be good oh yeah oh oh big no way no way that was big darn it that was definitely a pretty good fish there were huge hits like huge i'm not just going because of the line that pulled out i was running my drag loose in the rod locker with a clicker oh like obviously it could have come across a fish and snagged it too like even a carp but i did mark a couple nice fish not too long before that ouch that's a fish that's a fish little guy though i think little guy definitely not a hit like that last one that's for sure but that's okay that's the way it goes 105 feet out right now i like having a line counter reel not just for like duplicating the same thing over and over i love knowing how much line is out there when you're reeling in especially if you're fishing with somebody if i got carter with me i can be like okay tell me what you're out for line like 50 30 20 i know to get the net ready etc right so this one looks to be hooked underneath and actually that's a pike does that even count it's a pike pike don't count when you're walleye fishing i love pike fishing i just don't love pike when i'm walleye fishing okay get myself going here a little bit to the left i'm going to change crank colors to this guy right here just because it wasn't hot and heavy with the other one yes i did catch some fish 
I did have a really big hit on it. I just want to change it up a little bit. Oh, that's fish. Get it under control. Back off a bit. 2.9. Bring them in. Seems like every time I put on a new crank, I catch one right away. You know, just start changing the crank every through every fish, right? No, that's no fun. Crank will be out of the water too much. Well, they, well, we tried to flop out of my hands. They can't all be big. Well, not that I've caught anything big today either. I've, I've caught some nice ones, just nothing big yet. Cranking up, let out line. Yeah. I'm running an eight foot six, two B. Uh, it's a medium heavy, I believe, moderate action rod. Yeah, medium heavy, moderate action. Just started using them this year for cranking and they're they're designed to crank walleyes literally what they're for and so far so good obviously can't like comment heavily on it because i just started using them but really pri priced really really good this one's actually a telescoping one so a little bit smaller can fit in the rod rod lockers easier and yeah i have this one i have a seven foot two that i'm running as well and I can't remember what else I got. They make some 10 footers, I believe, but a longer rod with more of a moderate action is always good for cranking to absorb those head shakes because it is further out. You're bringing them a long ways in and they can be pretty head shaky at times and you want a rod that's going to absorb everything. I am running braid, I'm running 20 pound suffix G core with a 30 foot, um, 14 pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon leader. Well, and I've got 220 feet out like a donkey. If you're not going to run a moderate action rod, I would definitely say to go to mono. Then, then the mono will absorb your head shakes. But yeah, and then pay attention to your line counter and don't let out so much line. This is a Shimano Takoda 300 LC. LC stands for line counter. So trolling setup I'm using right now, it's not much different from what I used last year. I was running a Savage Gear Battletech walleye rod, but 2B was like, can we send you some rods for you to try them out? And I don't really have a relationship with Savage Gear anymore because they're bought by Pure Fishing. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's try some Elliott and 2B rods and very happy. Well, I think it's time to try a new spot. We... Didn't really catch much on this stretch. Let's go, uh, let's go swing for the fences and try some new spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot three, it's green. We're gonna make something happen. I can feel it. Do the trolley motor again. I'll tell you one thing, even though I haven't caught many fish, it's pretty relaxing. I thought I was gonna get a nice sunset, but it looks like the clouds have taken over. Oh well, it's the way she goes. Definitely has not been a productive evening at all. I think I'm still sitting like four walleye and one small pike. Just the way it goes. The one nice thing with pulling cranks is it's gonna take you to a bunch of new water that you've never fished before. You're gonna get out of your comfort comfort zone a little bit and probably fish some new water. Like the last stretch I did, I just started on a shoreline and I just went for probably about, I don't know, four or five miles. I just said, let's go. I just trolled and I trolled and I trolled. And along the way, I found some interesting things along the way, right? Like, it's like the structure's there because of the map, I can see, but along that structure, like, oh, there's some, some fish marking on the edge, so drop some waypoints and something to go back to and then pitch some jigs at or some hyper rattles or jig and mana, whatever, right? Like, it just, it's gonna take you to some new places, I feel like there's nothing wrong with enjoying an evening like this. I will say this though, glass calm like this, usually not the best 
I did have a little bit of a, a storm earlier in the day and after the storm, it usually isn't the best. I probably should have got out here at the start of the day when the storm was just kicking up, but just the way it goes. I still got about another half an hour left here. Hopefully we can troll on to another fish or two. And if not, this is going to be a very short little video. There we go, there we go, there we go. I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad. Maybe, look at that sunrise or the sunrise, the sunrise, the sunset. The sun has come out of those clouds and it's gonna be setting soon. Just a beautiful evening. Catching fish or not, days like this on the lake sure make me appreciate what I get to do for a living. And that's fish. And edit videos, it feels like. Anybody thinks that I, all I do is I fish, I fish, I fish. I don't, I, I edit my own videos as well. So anyways, this one feels like another decent fish. Not huge, just decent. Well, there's still a little bit of hope for some walleyes. That one's about a 18 incher probably. Going back home. At some point this fall, I'm gonna put some big walleyes in the boat, I promise. I've been off to a slow start, that's for sure, but I've got some plans for some big walleye trips here to try to chase big and big golden walleyes and maybe some greenbacks as well i'm sure i don't know i've got some plans i've got plans there's a bear on shore there look at that one i probably can't zoom in far enough but there is a bear okay let's see if it's gonna focus probably not oh maybe right there there's a bear hey bear I wish I would have saw it swimming, I could have went over to it, but yeah. Bad zoom or bad focus, it's a long ways away, but there's a bear. Oh, and I'm in 12 feet of water. Clayton, get out, Clayton, deeper. That's what happens when you're working the edge of a drop off. Oh, there's a fish. Still there? Yep, I think it's small, but it's a fish. At least maybe I'll end my night with a fish. Nothing like ending your night with a fish. That's where I lose it, right? Slow myself down. He's pretty small, I think. He's pretty tiny. If I had to guess, he would be a rat. He's already on the surface. Come here. Come here, little guy. He's a little green from water skiing him in. If I was taking one home to eat tonight, that would be the perfect specimen. I'm gonna wrap her up right there. Got about 15 minutes and uh, she'll be dark. The sunset about 15 minutes ago. So short little video, nothing great. Lots to come this fall though. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.